Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part nine of my design patterns video tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the final creational pattern that I'm going to cover in this tutorial called the prototype pattern. So what is the prototype pattern? It is when you want to create new objects or instances by cloning or copying other objects or instances. In a nutshell, that's the prototype pattern. So what does it allow you to do? It allows for the adding of any subclass instance of a known superclass at runtime, and you would want to use the prototype pattern when there are numerous potential classes that you want to only use if needed at runtime. And one of the benefits of the prototype pattern, it reduces the need for creating multiple subclasses. And here is kind of a common UML diagram for the prototype pattern. Normally this prototype factory that I have down here is not used in the common UML diagram for this pattern. However, I always use it and in this tutorial I'm going to use it. The more common UML diagram points directly from the client to the prototype and then from those subclasses that are going to be created from that subtype. And you can see that I have sheep and dog. This is actually going to be animal in this tutorial. And then the prototype factory is just going to pop out a whole bunch of these different guys. Basically, what I'm doing here is the client is going to create the clone factory. And then the client is also going to make a sheep object. Then the client is going to ask the clone factory to copy said sheep object. The sheep is going to be passed as an animal type. Remember, we're using polymorphism here. So we're going to be able to refer to sheep and dog as if they were animals. And then the clone factory simply asks the animal method make copy to make a copy of sheep. And then, of course, the sheep's make copy method is called and the result is sent back to said client. So let's jump into the code and make this 100% understandable. Okay, so here I am in Eclipse, and we're going to have a couple different classes inside of here. We're going to have Animal and Sheep, then I'm going to have my Clone Factory, and then finally Test Cloning is going to be the actual application where I'm going to test all this stuff. And all the code is available underneath the video, and you should definitely get it. So first we're going to go into Animal.java and create it. This is going to be so simple, and this is why I like using this factory thing that I mentioned before, because it allows me to make classes that just do pretty much one thing. So this is just going to be an interface. It's going to return an animal called animal, and it's going to extend clonable. And by making this class clonable, you are basically telling Java that it is okay to copy instances of this class. And those instance copies are going to be stored in completely different locations in memory. So it's a copy, but it is not a reference, which is maybe what you're used to seeing, because that's normally what you do say. And then we're just going to create public animal, make copy is going to be the only method that is going to be required to use this interface. And of course, spell clonable right. And there you go, that's all the work you need to do. Now we're gonna to need to jump into sheep.java. So here we are, and we're just gonna go public class, Sheep implements animal. And then, of course, we're going to zoom into sheep and it's going to tell us what methods we need to add. Add unimplemented methods, and there we are. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And then I'm just going to add a couple things to this, kind of just to use to explain what's going on as the application runs. So I'm going to create this constructor for the sheep, and it's just going to tell us when our sheep object is made quite simple and there you go and then we come down to the make copy area and this is where you're going to see everything be cloned so i'm just to save some time i'm going to copy this put some information inside of here and i'm basically just going to say cheap is being made so that you know that it is about ready to make a nice clone of our sheep just like dolly and then i'm going to go sheep sheep object and i'm going to make this null and then this is where we're going to be cloning everything and anytime you want to clone something you're going to need to wrap it in try catch blocks and to save myself time again i'm going to delete that and go sheep object is equal to we're going to cast the result to a sheep type and then we're going to call super which is a reference to animal clone there's clone and it's going to give me an error and if i put my mouse on that guy it's going to say surround with try catch blocks and that's what i did so got all that set up and clone not supported exception is going to be triggered if you try to clone an object that doesn't have extends clonable on it. So that's what that is. Then we're going to come down to this area. We're going to go sheep object. We're going to return our finished sheep that has been cloned. And then finally, I'm going to make a method here that's going to be called if they try to print out the actual object to, to the screen. And we do that with two string just like that. And then let's say we want to return something like dolly 
is my hero. Bah. And there you go. I'll save that. And there you go. Sheep is done. So now we're going to go into the clone factory. And like I said, you don't always have to use this. I just find it so much neater that I'm just going to stick with demonstrating this pattern this way. So clone factory. And then we're going to go public animal type get clone. So it's going to return an animal and it's going to be past an animal called animal sample. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to receive any animal, meaning any animal subclass and make a copy of it and then store it in its own location in memory. And the great thing about using this clone factory, it has no idea what these objects are, except that they are of a subclass of the animal type. That is all it knows. And here we're just going to go return animal sample, make copy. An animal sample is, of course, of type animal, and make copy, of course, is here in the interface as well as in sheep. Make copy, see? Make copy just means clone the super type of this animal and then cast it into being whatever it is, in this situation, a sheep. So pretty simple, and that's all we need to do. So now I'm going to go into testcloning.java, create this guy. So we're going to go public class test cloning, and then we're going to go public static void main. Now you know we are in the actual application here. And then we're going to do exactly what I told you. We're going to create our clone factory. I'm going to call it Animal Maker New Factory. And this is going to handle the routing of make copy method calls to the right subclasses of the animal. And then I'm going to create a sheep instance. And I'm going to call it Sally New Sheep. And we're going to be making a clone of Sally here in a second. And to do that, we're going to go sheep. I'm going to just call this clone sheep is equal to cast it to the sheep type that it is and then we'll go animal maker get clone and pass it sally and what it will do is make an absolute perfect copy of sally fields methods everything and then store it in a different location and then just to prove to you that all this is different we're going to call sally and that's where the two string method comes in and then we're also going to go clone sheep which is the clone of sally and then another thing we're going to do just to show that they're in different locations in memory is go sally hash code and then i'm going to go system identity hash code copy system identity hash code sally close that copy this guy and then this is going to be clone and all i do is go cloned sheep and i'll save it execute it and there you can see set sheep is being made that is our clone that's going to be made Dolly is my hero. Dolly is my hero. They both print out exactly the same thing whenever you call to string. However, you can see that their hash codes are different. They're located in a different part of memory. So there is the prototype design pattern. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.